Well, it's great to see everybody. As overdue, we haven't had a meeting for quite a while, and I know Mirko's made a lot of progress. So what I'm doing is I'm recording the call, and what I want to do is kind of go through what Mirko has done so far, and then uh, talk a little bit about the project, and then we'll just see where things go from there. But Kevin, I know you're sick, so you don't have to talk if you can't talk. And uh, I, at this point, we just hand off to Mirko and let him show us where he is right now. Yeah. <laughs> It's five o'clock here. Uh, by the way, it's Margarita time, so I'm sorry, I have to go now. So okay. yeah, <laughs> that was it. That's all we get. <laughs> That's it. No, let me share my screen. I actually I have a two computer. Now I start with this one, and then I reconnected with another one because we exported the project on Unreal. Unreal is a very famous uh, uh, software to for video game and uh, and uh, rendering. So. We, we just try to reach a level of uh, uh, detail uh, very high in order to don't uh, only not, not only to oh somebody just left there uh, he'll, be uh, he'll, he'll he'll figure it out he'll come back he needs to pay the power so <laughs> yeah oh shit anyway <laughs> same problem here no the, the thing is uh, uh, try to also add some details because uh, it's very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, compare only a, a, a gray shape, you know, the picture. But then with the paint scheme and other details, you have uh, a lot of details, uh, a lot of other elements that help you helps you to to understand uh, uh, how close we are uh, from the picture. Uh, I just want to tell you one thing. It's almost impossible. It's it's it's, a, it's almost impossible to be one hundred percent sure the pain will be exactly the same replica. First of all, by the way, the the left part of the plane is uh, different from the right part. So <laughs> you see some uh, big difference. So first of all, and second, it's uh, uh, due the um, distortion of the picture. It's very difficult to say. Okay, this is it because. Of course, uh, uh, it's uh, it's a common uh, in uh, it's something that we we, we experience here. And, but this is the most uh, uh, precise uh, average uh, interpretation. Uh, Kevin helps me. He helped me a lot uh, to make some uh, historical. Uh, okay, let me share the screen. Historical consideration, like uh, oh, they did it only with. Uh, you know, with the hammer. And by the way, Jim, uh, what you see now is the very first uh, version because we really don't like the one with the uh, high tail. You know, but uh, no joke apart, is I, I have also the, the 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 one with the other tails. But this one uh, is the the version that they present the plane in the very first uh, <clears throat> in the very first uh, um, version. Uh, by the way, it's the only one with the, the logo. The Springfield uh, Aircraft Company logo on the tail is the only one with a complete scheme uh, uh, and, and so on. Uh, I also have the other version, but uh, we think this one it's very, very cool. So I, I will have the conversation with you guys with this version, but we can also uh, uh, pop up the, the, the other one. Uh, as you can see from the screen, this is a, a software that uh, makes a progressive render. So if I don't touch uh, the, my uh, my uh, 3D mouse, uh, you see the rendering is it's coming and coming and better and better. But if I rotate, you see only a very highly, uh, uh, you know, pixelated picture. So uh, this is the situation right now. We put uh, also some uh, uh, ribs uh, and uh, fuselage uh, uh, strings uh, here, so. In order to simulate the, the part with the fabric and the other part with the, with the metal, what you see here in this software, it's a basically a very, very <laughs> smooth surface. What you will see later on, it's also with the, what we call a ladder weathering, you know, so the plane, the, the, it will be much, much more realistic. So I put, uh, I'm sorry. I put also the right engine and the right prop uh, on it just uh, to have uh, a better uh, a better look. And uh, this is the current situation. And uh, the plane, it's uh, very highly detailed. And uh, 
what you see here is a very uh, is the final uh, um, the current version i don't want to call final but we are very very close i think uh, all the surface, uh, all the all the contour are in within uh, one inch of uh, error or, or, of uh, uh, average, uh, you know, all all, all uh, the all the dimension. So I think we are very very close. Uh, if we see something to adapt uh, for the engineering or different system, different. Uh, uh, the children we are able we will be able to adjust the model according to uh, your uh, our decision the, the decision of the team uh, but so far this is the the current situation and i think we are very 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 close to the to to all the picture and and everything you know so we are very happy and we spend a lot of time to do all a lot of consideration. You saw all the consideration in my report. I have another two reports uh, very close to be uh, delivered, and I think it will be maybe the last one. You know, because at the end of the day, I mean, we study also the paint scheme, uh, everything uh, around the everything around the the wings and the connection with the fuselage, with the gull underneath. Uh, uh, we we traced the logo for the from the picture and the Galipti uh, draw. The logo is uh, this one. We still need to understand what uh, they wrote uh, under the logo, but yeah, we we will we will figure it out. And uh, I again I did this version because it's the only one with the uh, the complete graphics. And then my idea was to just uh, follow the developer. So we will have the this uh, high fin. Uh, actually, I have it. Uh, I don't. I don't apply the scheme so far because uh, in some pictures they just don't have the scheme. And by the way, guys, uh, in the picture they have a lot of different uh, situation in the exhaust system. Uh, we can see somehow they have uh, holes uh, in in the cowling. Sometimes uh, they just close it uh, and change the system. So. It's ready. Okay, it's also ready. Okay, can you can you can you join the conversation with the other computer, please? Thanks. So I have also the other one with the all the, the weathering and all the cool uh, stuff uh, for the surface. We also have thought uh, uh, we we spoke with the with the gym about the possibility to create uh, also to use this model to do. Uh, flight simulator things uh, or uh, radio control model. This one is very very precise. So this is why we spend also time to uh, for uh, the, all the other little details. We we still need to put some rivets and some panel, but uh, basically this is the current situation. And I think uh, I don't know what you think, but uh, what I see now is the the hull bulldog. Yes, looks beautiful. And I agree that the original tail was the best. And honestly, to me, it looks like it's enough tail. Uh, I don't know how Kevin and Tony look at it, but I look at it and think yeah. that looks like plenty of tail. Yeah, it, it really it really does. And, you know, we, what we do, really don't know is, is uh, you know, what problem were they trying to fix? You know, was it, you know, just, you know, was, was um, you know, you know the, the guys who flew it, you know, what were they dissatisfied with? And mm -hmm. what was it? You know, what were they really trying to fix? By the way, by the way, Simone is uh, he jumped into the the meeting so he can show you. You can. Uh, by the way, Jim, we are preparing also everything in a virtual reality, so we can guys uh, we can put the goggle on, and then we can walk around the plane, the full scale plane, which is very very cool. I really suggest you to to do it. And this is the. This is the current situation with all the weathering and all the bumps uh, and and stuff uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, in Unreal Engine. So I, 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 we 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 still to work on. Uh, I don't I don't know if the paint will be so glossy, you know. So we add a layer of uh, kind of like uh, dirt and uh, occlusion and some kind of. But yeah, we, we we this is what uh, we are working uh, on right now, and we think uh, we think uh, this level of presentation is uh, aligned with the gym previous business with the uh, you know radio control things and maybe future 
uh, also also flying simulator things. And so we thought, uh, you know, it, it was the best way to present uh, the, the project uh, and not only a 3D model. So, how much work do you think? Go ahead. I was, I was going to say, boy, the wings look wow. thin when you see it they in, do. in this yeah. presentation. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, by the way, in this presentation here, the angle of the camera, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I don't know, it's a wide. Can you change, uh, Simon? The, Pretty high. The, the, yeah. Uh, we so, yeah, need to I, give him a, I, um, a uh, um, Bowles Field image yeah. to, to have him put it at Bowles Field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can, we can do right it. Now. We can do it. No problem. We can. Absolutely Mirko, how much do work do you feel is left to do? Not so much. Not so Not much so work. Much, I think. I think in one week we can deliver also the three D model in uh, the, in also in the app that uh, somebody can uh, download and rotate and see the plane. And, okay. Uh, we we okay, that's, we skip yeah. all the interiors. So the, the interiors are for us uh, just empty hall, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that sure looks like the airplane, doesn't it? It does. It's pretty. That is pretty. Yeah. Oh, this one with the I I I I would love to, if if the project was mine, no no question, this tail and not the 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 other one. But I don't. Know. Well, don't forget somebody has to sit inside of it and fly it around. So we have to we have to <laughs> we have to. That's probably going to be me, I suppose. So we have to uh, think about what the what what the reasons they had. This is Kevin said. Why do they? detail but you know based on what we've read i don't know that there was really a great necessarily a great reason for the the tall tail it looks like there was probably um, almost more of a um, kind of a okay you asked for it kind of approach to the engineering on that one we're not sure mm -hmm. but um i would imagine we could probably i, I imagine it would fly okay with this tail just looking at it, it probably would well, it might it's be interesting that after the first flight yeah, you swap the rudder the rudder after one maybe two flights i have to go back right along. it wasn't on yeah, very yeah. Right. and then he went okay it's good you know yeah. yeah that's the funny thing after every flight you look at a uh a newspaper uh article and he says yeah it was perfect and then the next right. day he changes something and then they interview him after the next one he says no it's perfect <laughs> the but was he, well, was he just trying too. to satisfy the you know um Thaw, you know, yeah, and you know whatever excuses that you know our, our statements Thaw was making, not necessarily excuses. But yeah, we're saying I want this or I want that or this would be better. Um, yeah, I I don't know, and it's and and what we don't know is did it ever was, did, was whatever they were trying to cure actually cured with the big tail or did, was it just right? Different? So uh, I think now, it's you, first you know, Jim Jim early on we we talked about having um uh uh letting us her do the yeah do some arrow on it and so now with mirko's new you know complete surface i think that might be something worth doing just to find out if the tail is is good enough maybe we can get yeah. somebody to simulate that and, and first they tried to they try to just uh, make the, the rather wider and then yeah. they you know, go with the fin. It's a very, very ugly version with this ugly fin. You know, and right. then they did it the the, 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 the original one. So, well, if they, we they, they, design it with, let's imagine we enlarge the rotor twenty five percent in area, but it's kept the same shape, we'd be yeah. much happier with how it looks, and we'd have a we'd certainly have the same area. I would think. I don't know, but maybe not. They they had a lot of area, but it can't take as much as they ended up with. It just doesn't seem possible right. it doesn't look like it makes sense yeah, yeah you, you look at the back end of the the g the z model and you know we've yeah. got way more vertical fin area now granted side of the side of the fuselage acted like vertical fin on yeah i think i think some of the problem too could be the fact that the airplane was was flying tail low almost all the time you look at yeah. it it's always yeah. seems like it's dragging its butt uh -huh. and so now you're blanking the tail so now they make the tail taller you know if the cg is correct and the thing's the things up on the step like it should be now your tail's yeah. in the air rather than being blanked you know behind yeah it may never have been in the air yeah yeah makes sense well mirko this all looks very good and what we really you know just hoping that uh, we can move on to the engineering 
and that you can finish the work that you're doing so we can do that. Um, and it sounds like you're very close. And I, and I think I heard you say you could be done in a week. Is that right? Yes, correct. Uh, to be honest with you, I can deliver the 3D model right now. To Kevin. Okay. You know, I did it with the wings uh, and uh, he already, as you uh, saw in the last, uh, uh, in, in the latest uh, um, report, uh, he already fixed uh, all the ribs uh, to, to, to adjust a little bit uh, the wing. Now I just needed to understand that one of the problems is uh, the, the landing gear, you know, they rotate in this way, you know, kind of like a sus suspension system. So we decided to, not we, you decided to say, okay, we will, we will you know, have only one uh, slight uh, uh, swing. So uh, I just needed to know in which direction and basically it's kind of like in flight direction you know this is aligned with the, in the flight in, in the flight position uh what, when you see the pixel on the ground sometimes they are very 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 open you know sometimes and in flight it's very difficult to, to see and judge so uh, this uh, uh but the fairing and uh, the fairing are done so it's just a matter of uh, you know choose the right the right angle and uh, and by the way, uh, speaking about the tail, I'm I'm sure with the uh, CFD, maybe we can run, uh, we can make a run of CFD or uh, uh, you know quick calculation of the area, and you will get some uh, stability data on the, the beta uh, angle on the yaw and, and yeah. a different uh, angle of attack, and you can say okay, let's. But I have also the the one. Uh, I have all the versions, so it's up to you. Um, it's a, the, the the hard thing with the uh, tail is that um, that no matter what kind of analysis you do, it's not there isn't really a way to analyze it that will be the same as doing flight testing. It's possible in flight testing to the spin, and they found some things they didn't like about it. It's hard for CFD to help with that. If we go with the smaller tail, we're just what we're faced with is is uh, flight testing and refinement. That's okay. really we're back in that mode. Uh, but they can, I mean. It'd be enough to tell if it's going to be stable, <clears throat> but it, I think it just obviously is going to be pretty stable. It's going to be more about the aerobatic performance that I think we'd be worried about. Uh, that's going to be hard to solve with CFD. Anyway, I think it looks beautiful, and I'm glad to hear that you're so close. I didn't know that you were that close. That's great news. We'd like to have this the, this part of the project wrapped up. And I really quick, I want to talk to Tony about something. Uh, Tony, you know, I, every time I look at this, I think about, okay, what's going to be like to actually fly this thing from place to place? And one of the things, if you can look at the, Simone, if you can look at the top of the airplane, one of the things I noticed really for the first time is that uh, if, we're, if we're refilling the airplane. Simon, can, can, you, can you show the top of the plane? Yeah. Okay. There's the fuel okay, caps thanks. right there on the top of the airplane. Now imagine you've got those gear legs that work around. You're putting a ladder up there and you're trying not to ding the leading edge or the trailing edge with the hose as you're trying to Good fuel it. You know, we have to make a few concessions because uh, we're not going to have a crew around every time I'm campaigning with this aircraft going to an air show. We have to have some way for me to take care of it. So we might want to move the location of those fuel caps and I, as i look at it, i don't even know where a good place is so we're have to talk about that a little bit i think yeah and i think that's all in in development as we build our replica yeah you know because we don't need 210 gallons or whatever he had on board no. we need yeah, however much we need um and so you know we could go lower i mean they had those up there so that you could fill it absolutely to the brim and cap it off and go fly um you know we could be a little lower with the fuel caps and uh, they, yeah. they didn't mind sitting on the airplane either. It was a working right. airplane. Right. Right. Yeah. Sitting up on top working, you know, putting gas in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we have... had, you know, you could always put it on the side. And, and one thing we did on the Z is I, you know, I didn't want to have a ton of fuel uh, on it. And we ended up with 85 gallons is what we ended up having in the Z because I, I kind of did the math. You know, we're in Florida. Um, could I put enough gas in it? I think the original was like 120 gallons. Would that get us all the way to Oshkosh with a reserve to be able to get into Oshkosh? Mm, not really. We probably still want to make a stop. So right. 85 gallons, you know, still got us to where we would make a stop and could go and have a reserve. So, you know, I'm sure, you know, once, once Tony gets into, you know, doing tanks and doing the other stuff, you start looking at, you know, what kind of, how long do you, you know, Jim, how long do you want to sit in it? You know, an hour and, and a half. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, an hour and a half. So I mean, that's two so hours is about two hours yeah. of gas. You're good. You know, you don't yeah. need a. You're not going to from from L.A. to uh, to Cleveland. Yeah, I just one. got an <laughs> FXS, and it was um, 
I mean, I could do like four hours or something. And uh, <laughs> I had a long cross country and I did like three and that is enough. So yeah, wow. two hours yeah, plus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, two hours plus a half hour, just to be sure you're going to be okay is, is about right. Which that's probably 75 gallons, I guess, or so. I, I don't know. Yeah, it won't be a ridiculous amount of fuel. Uh, yeah. I, I, I just wanted to finish to present the, the current status very quickly. Uh, I'm working with Kevin to understand the, the exact position of the hole in the cavern. And if uh, we want uh, to have this uh, system or uh, a classic, uh, you know, uh, ring, uh, you know, with the, because they, well, they, we, yeah. we'll, we're going to do it. We're not going to do this approach. They, there was, there's some um, conflicting information on this. Um, uh, it was meant to scavenge air and might have worked, but it would take time to sort out whether that works or not. And it doesn't look as clean and it's harder for us to do. So there's no, we don't have any thought about doing that. We're going to do a traditional exhaust. Yeah. Okay. And the carbon monoxide poisoning is real. And when you got that, that's that, true. That's aiming right at your face, it's not a good idea. So we're, we're going to do a collector with like a BT 13 style exhaust or okay. um, running out. Do you want to fake that? What's what? that? You like can paint. System, so it looks like it's there, but it's not. Yeah, I mean, maybe we cut the holes in the cowl and put plates over them and, and do something like that just to. Yeah, we could. You know, it's, be, it's, it's we all, of it's course, one of those things that, like on the, on the GBZ, when we, when we built it, we did the short stacks. The thing yeah. I said was if it didn't make the exhaust stains on the sides, I was going to airbrush them on. <laughs> you know, it just, it has That's to look. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, in us using the 985, you know, we're quite a bit smaller in diameter. And so we got a ton of room back there to do all sorts of spiffy stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And we all also, the, the people on this call, we know all of these details, but most people don't. It's going to look like a bulldog and that's what matters. But I think what we should do is right. get some, some vinyl graphics that have the stains and the holes, and then we just pull them off and we don't want them and just stick new ones on. We want them. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> always happy that way. Yeah. Uh, uh, another another couple of things uh, is, uh, of course, uh, uh, decide which version we want to do again, because uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, difference. And uh, I think this one will be uh, Jim's uh, uh, Bulldogs. I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of like interpretation, you know, so uh, also not only for the fuel cap and so on. Uh, another thing is about the color. So. Uh, uh, what uh, I have to finish with Kevin is uh, understanding the exit position of these holes and uh, see also uh, some other little bit about the, 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 the landing gear, as I mentioned before. And uh, the last thing is about the, the right color. It's almost impossible from pictures to pick the right uh, to, uh, tone of uh, color. So I, uh, as a uh, as an aircraft designer, uh, I played a little a little bit a role of uh, I apply what I would love to have you know so uh, Jim we have to uh, see the exact color at the end and maybe say okay well what you like you know so this is my last uh, uh, the, the, the last uh, question it's uh, well you and, picked uh, you picked a good Italian color you have a, a tiny tinge of orange in that red it's a Ferrari red <laughs> and I think that, I think that looks beautiful. So I, I don't really have a problem with that color. I think that's what people would imagine it looks like. I think that's a good color to use right there. Uh oh, we might have lost Mirko. And then, uh, was there that um, is it Jim has a fabric sample? Does it have some? Does it have some red on? Yeah, yeah. we have a we have a fabric sample, and uh, there's also a larger sample that Jim Jenkins has, which has a little bit better uh, provenance. Um, but but we think we have an original. Well, I, we do seem to have an original fabric sample. But but Jim's actually had a letter um, from Primo Galletti that made it really clear it's it's totally real. So we would like to at some point get those two together to, to see if the colors match. Of course, even if the colors don't perfectly match, it doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have a a right. real one. But and and even if they match perfectly, it doesn't mean that color is what the color was when it was painted. It probably isn't. But it is a darker red than I expected for sure. Well, and, and Jim. Uh, Primo, sorry if I interrupt you, Kevin. Primo was Italian guy. Primo Galletti is Italian yeah. guy. So you can blame, uh, you can blame. Yeah, of course. That you know, yeah. Just used us so much. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tony. Jim's, uh, Jim's sample actually has all three colors in it because it's got the white stripes and it's got the black sample to it as well. So, and yeah, there's going to be some fading and some degrading in the paint over the years. Um, but well, the paint darkens, and we, well, Tony and I were actually, we met with Jim, and it was, it's funny because yeah, we talk about the color now because it happened in one of those days where there were just terrible forest fires, 
in Oregon. And literally the sky was like, I woke up, it was orange and I could only see like a quarter mile. We ended up taking pictures, but it's useless because it's through an orange, you know, haze. <laughs> But uh, but I'm I'm sure we can work with Jim and and take a look at those samples. They're just going to be dark. It's not going to probably help us too much, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Another question is uh, so my next uh, uh, my next task is uh, provided the three D model the, the current three D model to Kevin, and um, I can do it uh, tomorrow. This is not a big deal, and then uh, see. Uh, what we want to do, Jim, uh, with this uh, virtual reality thing, because we are now we are using a software named Substance Designer. We can also do all this, uh, you know, stain and weathering and yeah. hammering things, you know, because uh, I also think it's very good to create uh, a poster, book, pictures, mm -hmm. stuff like that, because I mean, it's it's doable and it, 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 it's it's we can do it, you know, and also if you want uh, during the process we can add the later on uh, the interiors if you when when you will have uh, all the system yeah and uh, the flight at least uh, for the cockpit you know because now it's just empty hole so far yes i think that the i think you have a good approach i want you to give the information to kevin so he can continue with the engineering and then i would like to see the uh you know a, a 3d model um uh, with all those options but um i do want to have it wrapped up soon hopefully you can continue to work on that and get that done for the interior we will uh, come back to you when it's time for the interior. I don't think we need that right now. In fact, so my plan is to give you uh, in uh, within one week uh, a 3D uh, a 3D presentation of this one that everybody can download. They can spin, and maybe yeah. we can uh, with a couple of buttons say original rather uh, final one. You know, so they can see all the different things because I have it. I have it, and this could be very should be very very cool. Okay, great. Well, that sounds perfect for me. So then I think the next thing we have to do is talk to Kevin and see how Kevin, Kevin, I, you're sick right now. And I know you might be overwhelmed with things that are going on, but um, are you, are you still interested in taking on the rest of the engineering on this? And Kevin froze right at the critical moment. <laughs> he's, he's holding still really nicely. <laughs> All right. okay, yeah, you're back. Am I back yeah, I, here we are. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, definitely, you know, still want to uh, be part of your team and, and work with, with you guys on this. Uh, Tony and I have, have had a couple of short conversations about, um, you know, distributing some of the load on on that a little bit. Uh, me get some stuff, some, um, uh, when I get this model from Mirko and I can make sure the fuselage structure will fit inside, share that with Tony, the basic layout, and then have him start going to town on, figuring out the fuselage while I continue on the wing stuff. Um, just try to try to spread it out a little bit uh, so that I'm not the bottleneck for what's going on. Okay, well, get, I think what we do, yeah, and I don't want to put you on the spot too much in this call, but let's uh, sometime when you guys have time to, you know, after Mirko gets stuff to you and you've had a chance to talk to Tony, let's the three of us sit down and talk about the schedule for all the engineering and uh, that way Tony can, like you said, get going. Uh, but we we love working with you, and I'm glad to hear that you want to continue with it. It's it's great. This is a good team. We want to keep going with it. And I, I think if, um, oh, yeah. if we get Tony building an aircraft, he should be done. I mean, Tony's pretty quick. You guys haven't yeah. seen him work. I have. I've worked with a lot of people, and Tony just moves from one thing to another. He doesn't have to sit and think very much. Now, that doesn't mean he can't think. He can think, but he just doesn't need <laughs> to just go through things and get things done. So I think the build itself will be pretty fast. Okay, well. I don't want to. Um, I, I think we. I think we could have done enough of this call. Is there anything else anyone needs to, to talk about right now? Uh, for my side, no. Uh, I hope you like uh, the final the, this uh, current result. Uh, you will have yeah. the the reports uh, on uh, how to make the paint scheme from a picture and so on. So you can also create a kind of like collection of this uh, product. And if you want to to keep going to. Uh, do the same thing uh, during the, the the CAD or the making of. I think you you can do a book uh, definitely about this uh, replica, and expect uh, the the software in uh, one week, ten days, so you can uh, put online. I will give you all the information for the website as well. So nice rendering and uh, uh, as as I show you before in uh, vintage look, and uh, yeah, I I think uh, we are a plan. Thanks, Mirko. And as you complete things, make sure you send it to me so I can put it in our project archives as well, not just to Kevin. I need all the all the source files for what you're working on need to go into the archive. Thank you. Okay, Absolutely, Tony. Yes. 
Yeah, let's just go one by one. Tony, anything to check in on with you? Obviously, probably uh, not. You haven't done anything. No, no, yeah, I haven't done anything. Uh, <laughs> you know, and when once we do get stuff, of course, it's a matter of getting everything scheduled in. Um, yeah. So, like, I put that in there. Just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and get going on things. So. Well, you have another airplane to work on for me, so that's a higher priority right now. Right. 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 Yeah. Just you. Okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, Matt. Uh, uh, what about you? Do we have? Uh, is there? Are there any more leads left? I think I want to. I just want to challenge you right now. Do we have okay. every photo of the Hall Bulldog that's ever been taken? No, no, we don't. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, well, there are. Uh, we we have copies of what I feel like there are every photo ever taken. Unfortunately, some of those copies are um, scans of old newspaper photos, which yeah. are the really yeah. high uh, high contrast, no detail kind of things. Uh, we've got that one that uh, the plane's actually like mid bill with the skin off of it, and yeah. we could possibly find that. That would be incredible. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any interior cockpit photos that show details really clearly. We've got a couple yeah. over the shoulder shots, uh, which would be great. There are two other leads that I've been trying to track down. Um, Primo Galetti's family is one of them. I've been at it for like two years at this point. Um, and haven't been able to find where his archives went to. Uh, okay. Because by all reports, there was a lot out there. He had stacks of stuff and um, just up and disappeared. Uh, the other one um, is David Anderson. Uh, he's the son of one of the original Springfield Aircraft Company uh, employees. Uh, David was the one that gave us the... Uh, he didn't give it to us, but he was in possession of the uh, the rudder pedal drawing. Um, supposedly, he has more, but we haven't been able to track him down. Um, so there is a little bit out there, but nothing that's going to change, I think, where we're at as far as the shape of the plane, any of those things. Uh, it would just be fine details. And um, Well, then I think the mission, I agree we have the shape of the airplane now, but the mission is to uh, to also to document, to be to preserve the, the documents Related to the aircraft, so and if we can collect them all in one place, every, everyone who loves the aircraft is better off. So I think just keep at it. I, I'm glad you're taking care of all that. And if we need to hire a private eye, let me know. <laughs> we uh, we I actually I just got another photo uh, about two days ago. Um, you know, it doesn't show us anything new. It's essentially that same side view from Cleveland uh, with yeah. the with the caps on it, and then. Uh, Fairly recently, we got a photo of it at uh, Roosevelt Field the day that uh, uh, Russ thought turned down ownership of the plane or turned down flying it, um, which has that paint scheme that's got uh, the white outlines around the, the tail numbers and uh, yeah. a few more details there. Uh, we finally got a really high resolution version of that. So there is stuff out there and we're, we're putting it all together. We're, we're trying to get as much as we can. So. Okay. Well, great work, everyone. I mean, everybody's doing their best. I can see that everybody's working really hard and takes a lot of care with what they're doing, including me. I'm really excited about this. And just thanks for checking in with me. Appreciate it, everyone. We'll be talking again soon. Uh, Mirko, just do what you said you're going to do. And Kevin, we'll chat with you when you're, when you're uh, up to speed on it all. Okay? All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.